this morning I would like to show you how we are converting the cow pasture that was on the second acre here in Hawaii into productive vegetable space. So first thing is let's have a look at the virgin material here. Right out there is what the land looks like. That grass is really really thick and deep. Um, I have been uh, requested by some of our viewers to go on out and assault the grass again. So I'm heading out there. I'm going to show you. This stuff is so thick, it'll just swallow you up. Ah! And it's hard to get out of, too. Okay? This is tough stuff. So as you can see, it's difficult stuff. Not the kind of stuff you just want to go walking out into and working with. It'll tangle up mowers, rototillers, it breaks machinery. It's really quite a grass. So what I've decided to do about it over time, we figured out it's a lot easier to kill it under an impervious mulch. So let me show you the process here. Right over here you can see where the cow pasture sits here. Right over here, we've taken a uh, weed block. This is the woven industrial grade weed block. Heavy duty stuff. It's UV stable, holds up 10 to 20 years. We've laid it down over the top of the grass. Over time, the grass underneath begins to die away. Right over here is a recent tarping. Uh, just this week we did this one and all the junk laying on top here is uh, coffee prunings and pineapple trimmings and so on. Uh, we use it as weight just to hold the weed block down in the trade winds because you can probably hear it in the microphones. It gets pretty breezy up here on this hill at times. So right over here is an area where we had the weed block down for about a month and a half. It killed pretty much everything that was underneath it. I then ran across it with a power mower to help grind up some of the material once it was rotting. Right here you'll see a pile of stuff and right there is our gorilla dump cart uh, being put to work. I've been out in the coffee planting and I've been hauling out weeds and prunings from the coffee and I'm bringing them out here onto this area because it's just a good place to uh, work with them uh, so uh, they're less messy. Now I'm going to use the bigger pieces for my barbecue grill but all the fine stuff is going to get chopped down and become composted mulch here on the soil. First off, run the dump cart. Oh, that was cool. Next, fire up the power mower. see how uh, the lawnmower just ground that stuff up. I mean this was coffee branches, weeds, leaves, all sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, there's a few larger pieces in here like so. Now this stuff can then be repiled. So when you go to do this with a lawnmower, uh, you want to make sure you got everything heaped up really well so it's in a pile so you can drop the mower down on top of it. If it becomes too flat, it'll go under the mower. So you want to heap, 
and then you want to lift the front of the mower, drop the mower down on top of the pile. I really enjoy having a high horsepower lawnmower for this project. I'd say between six and eight horsepower works the best. Also make sure you got the blade nice and sharp. It'll dull out pretty quick when you're chopping wood with it. So you want to take it off every few days if you got a lot of work to do and sharpen it. I prefer the mower to a compost shredder. I think the tools actually last longer. Uh, they don't bog down as easily as the shredders do. And they have a wider variety of purposes. I can mow a lawn with this guy, let alone mow raspberry stalks and so on. Been using a mower for a compost shredder around my place for a long, long time. Anyway, uh, let me show you what happens after the fact. So, right over here is a region that had been pasture. Um, I went ahead and put it under the weed block, killed it, went through, tossed mustard seed. Mustard seed was out there to uh, help remove nematodes from the soil as a cover crop. Then I mowed the mustard, um, turned around and put in corn, put in okra, tomatoes, uh, there's some onions down there on the far end, and over here we've got peanuts and celery. I got a little bit of weeds growing in here. I'll probably come through with a strap hoe or maybe a propane burner and address them, but most of the weeds are in the corn and uh, they really aren't going to amount to much anything anyway. When these patches get weedy again later, I will just turn around and put the weed block over the top, kill everything that's in there, uh, and maybe come back with a cover crop later on, and then again vegetables later. Uh, this is pretty much done without the aid of uh, fossil fuel tillage. We're not breaking the soil in the process. Now I am using the mower which burns fossil fuel and the main reason I do that is because it makes it easier to get rid of my coffee branches um, and the compost, the mulch that goes onto the soil here is good for it. But uh, I could do it without the mower. It can be done without the mower. I've done it that way before. Oh, and so if you're asking yourself what is all the white junk laying around out there? Dolomite lime soil here is relatively acid and recently I tossed some dolomite around hasn't rained itself in yet. This patch of vegetables over here uh, went through the same process this last year and so this has already had a series of different crops in it. Currently I've got uh, cabbages and Chinese cabbages and there's broccoli over there and there's arugula for seed at this point in time daikon almost harvested, one last daikon left there, peanuts, we had Maui onions out here, we had Kobo green onions, there's a great crop of broccoli still going on, broccoli comes and comes and comes again here, um, I put Kobo green onion back into the ground over here after harvesting up the daikon. So again, no chillage. Well, here comes Ellen out of the forest with a load of coffee branches. Pulling the gorilla cart, the dump cart. Getting its usage. There we go. The dump feature operating perfectly. So there you have it. A look at no tillage gardening in Hawaii. How to do it without having to use a tiller. No fighting that grass. Aloha. Happy gardening.